Hello, welcome to wrestling. The high point in the week, and one's inhibitions should be saved up for it. You'll rid them when the European Butter Mountain personified enters the ring. He's sure to lure pack them in. Giant Haystacks takes on Jamaica George later, but first the victor of this starter has a date with Ray Steele, which is also still to come on today's program. From one ray of hope to another hopeful ray, Ray Robinson takes on Ian McGregor. Robinson, with his monogrammed gown, is as smooth as a silver shadow, but McGregor could grace any clan as chieftain. At the ringside, Kent Walton. Thank you, Robin. Hello, grappling fans. And a three-man knockout tournament just about to start. Here they come. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest is a contest which is part of a three-man knockout contest. The winner to receive this lovely trophy the referee has in his hand. First of all, I introduce him in the blue corner, the cruiserweight champion of Great Britain from Scunthorpe, Ray Robinson. His opponent in the red corner. Let's give a big warm welcome to Ian McGregor. And the referee for this contest, Liverpool, Mr. Arthur Donovan. Thank you. So Ian McGregor takes on Ray Robinson in this uh, semi-final, which it is effectively, because Ray Steele, the other uh, man of this three-man contest, has uh, got a bye uh, through to the final. So the winner of these two, Robinson or McGregor, takes on Ray Steele in the final later on this afternoon. Six five-minute rounds, two falls to decide it. <laughs> Arthur Donovan of Liverpool, the referee in this one. Ian McGregor on the left. Seconds away, round one. And here we go for round one of six. Ray Robinson from Scunthorpe. There he is. Red stripe down the side of his trunks. 14 and a half stone. And his opponent from Scotland originally, Ian McGregor, now living in Ashton on the line. With a side headlock on now. Best of three falls here. Side headlock still on to Robinson. Won't get him a score, but it might weaken his man a bit. side uh, that crowd are on <laughs> too short a grapevine there couldn't hold it his man back for a shoulder press, a further shoulder press. It's a bit early to try that one, McGregor. In fact, he nearly wound up in trouble himself from it. Ray Robinson unlikely to fall 
for that trick as early as this. He tries the folding press. Forced to step back, give up. As early as round one, it's too early really to try that. You've got to weaken your man a bit more before he'll stay down for three. Robinson still holding on to it. Nice. Very nice move by McGregor there. Counted the move beautifully. Headlock and strangle to McGregor. Side headlock, Robinson again. He's hot on that, especially with his left arm. Switches, forearm off the top, first the boat. And now it's coming, big and fast with the forearms. Slow rollout by McGregor there. He made it quicker, he could have got an advantage from it. The Dolo in round one, no score. Ian McGregor, originally from around Edinburgh away, now living in Ashton on the line. 14 stone of him. Marty Jones is the man that started this man in the game. But he's proud of him now. He's a sports all-rounder, trains for the weights and bodybuilding, turned pro as far back as 82. This man, Ray Robinson, hasn't had much more experience than his Second opponent. Way, round two. Turned pro about 80. Round two, no score. McGregor versus Robinson. And what is ostensibly the third semi-final in this uh, three-man knockout tournament, because the winner of this one takes on Ray Steele in the final later on this afternoon. Perfectly legal that sole of the foot move there by Robinson because his man wasn't down at the time. Now the crutch hold and slam, he thinks he's getting weakened. Pull on body check, Robinson's still in charge. I reached for him too early. and back elbows there and there's another double arm over the top beauty oh <laughs> look right here his own ideas if he wants uh, four arm smashes I'll give them to him he says Tom McGregor doing very much the worst of it so far. Nice double arm there. This is McGregor got a chance now to get his man over for a shoulder press. And that lady would love him to complete it. But not this time. Oh, 
Watch hold again, this time by McGregor. Over the top, cross press, he's got the leg hooked. He might hold it, he has. The first fall to McGregor in round two. Just over two and a half minutes gone. He's happy, the crowd's happy, everybody's happy about that one. Two minutes, 34 seconds with a shoulder press. The only fall of the contest, red corner, Scotland, Ian McGregor! And this is how he did it, the crotch hold and slam. And he hooked that leg perfectly. No chance for Robinson to get out of it. Seconds away, round three. Round three, and McGregor leading Robinson. That's McGregor on the right there with the blue trunks, the white flash in front of them. And there's the headbutt, forehead. The follow down, back elbow. This is how Robinson weakened his man in the last round. It's the early part of it. So he got a surprise towards the second half. Hold again, slam. This is how it, mm, this is. If he'd followed that down, that was exactly how he got the first fall. He tried a knee drop, that didn't come off. He tries the shoulder press the follow through and it didn't come off either. The side had a, a punch very like a punch then. That looked like a clinch fist to me. I think that uh, McGregor will think so too. Yeah, Not a very good landing outside the, the ring there. Public warning to Ray Robinson. And he gets a public warning for doing that so that punch was spotted. Place because it was an illegal move that put him out of the ring. Watch hold this time by Robinson. The slam. A very late follow down with a cross press and thrown off very easily on counter one. was a slap or a clinch fist and what he was, but the referee was right there in position. These four are metaphors. They can fight. Robinson trying to come back into this. That's sure the way to do it, though. There's been one public warning against him already. Referee Donovan keeping him away. Illegal use of the ropes. Watch hold to Robinson. A slam again, but again, he walks away. Doesn't consider it's worth trying the folding press finish yet. Ian McGregor looks pretty weakened. 
And that could weaken him even more, that backdrop of beauty. Now this time Robinson goes over the top, grabs the leg, and this could be trouble for McGregor. And it is. So the equalizer in round three. Robinson. McGregor's seconds working on him. Well, ladies and gentlemen, and four minutes, 15 seconds of round three, the equalizing fall to Ray Robinson. Well, Ray happy now. Man, who, uh, there he goes again. See this tremendous lift and, and backdrop. Follow through quickly with a leg grab, and that was it. Seconds away, round four. And McGregor not too happy. He gets up very slowly from the bell. But it's one fall each now. And the winner of the next score will take on Ray Steele of Wakefield in the final later this afternoon. Spending a lot of time out of the ring, McGregor's knee. Two not too good landings as well. Now, Ray came in too close then. And the follow-up, a lovely drop kick from the ropes there. Beauty, really landed well. That could be trouble for Ray Robinson. Don't think he's going to make that one. There he is. And now he hasn't made it. He got up on the ropes, but he didn't get the knees off the canvas. So he hasn't made it. So McGregor the winner by a knockout in round four. And he's still going to continue to prove that he's the better man. Still, uh, McGregor wants to continue. <laughs> He's already won it by a knockout. He doesn't need any more, surely. He's in the final now against Ray Steele. Later on in the program. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And round four, Robinson fails to beat the count. The winner is... And that's the one that did it. Beautiful drop kick from the top rope. Some referees wouldn't have liked that, but this Donovan let it go. Anyway, it's a win by a knockout. And don't forget, after the break, join us again for the big giant haystacks. And welcome back for an international heavyweight contest. And when I say heavy, I mean heavy. This is the man, Jamaica George, from Kingston, Jamaica. A charming guy, very nice guy indeed. As he gets in the ring, he's got the take on the giant haystacks who really feels like it will be on his way to the ring too here he comes just makes the door six foot eleven of him 42 stone in weight any opponent of his looks like a midget but on this occasion He's quite a big man, six foot three and 16 stone two, George, so he still looks more by comparison, of course. This man is enormous. Giant haystacks, of course. Middle name Luke McMasters from Salford, Lancashire. versus Jamaica. Brian Crabtree, your master of ceremonies, waiting patiently to introduce them. Already he started his... Oh, pushing the referee away. Now that, the yellow card could come out for that.
Haystacks has had a new style of haircut since I last saw him. Jeff Kay, one of the, the referee here on this boat, one of the great welterweight wrestlers of his time, but he's only just given up wrestling recently. Looks a bit short, doesn't he? <laughs> so does Jamaica George, six foot three of him. But against a man of six foot eleven, who doesn't look short? Anyway, there. There's still an argument going on, but I can't think what about. If the bell went then. So one presumes when you hear the bell, it's the start of round one, but <laughs> George ready. Haystack not ready. Doesn't want to know for the moment, does he? So Jeff K bringing the MC into this because he, he wants a decision made here. silence in the ring when he's in the ring. Never heard him ask for that before. He's attacking the referee, he's attacking the MC. Hasn't attacked me yet, hasn't spotted me so far. So finally I think uh, the big man is willing to come into action. <laughs> George already training up for it. Jamaica George from Kingston, Jamaica. 16 stone two. Great physique, really good looking man this one. Outstanding his tricks and Jeff Kayla right there telling him about it. So holding his man down in the corner. And that back arm over the stomach, not making too much impression. The third one did better. <laughs> the forearm haystacks does even better still. Ah, now this is another haystack special. A nerve hole in the side of the neck. Fingers right on the spot. Tremendous pressure. George not He's doing nothing illegal, so the referee can't stop it. Back elbow gets him off. Now he's trying to get the leg off. We he can floor this man. The crowd will go wild. of the ropes here. Referee right close up there to watch it. I think, oh, I think. Yeah. Yes, 
should get a public warning for that, all right. A little bit late, but it came, fortunately. Question of Chris, can George really reach him? Can he reach him? He's tried the leg to pull him off balance. Can't do that. Oh, there he is, this big man. Toured all over the world, Haystacks. George hasn't been on well, quite so much, but he has been on tours in Spain and Germany wrestled Wilfred Dietrich, once an Olympic gold medalist. But this man's been all over the world many times. George in a bad way, but let's hope he reaches this colossus in the next round, as we start round two. One public warning against Haysack. And very like a punch. And yes, the referee thinks so, the crowd knows so. And Haystack says no with the heel of the hand. <laughs> Referee blindside again. George is the one that knows. For sure. Haystack certainly got his own brand of wrestling moves. But they were pretty effective, all strength to you. That's another thing that could be the punch too easily. Love to see George try to get him off balance. Now that's pressing him to the chest so he can't breathe. Referee making sure the mouth and nose are not covered completely. Couldn't have been covered because he didn't turn the break. And he would have given a public warning anyway. More throws than holes with Haystack, of course. But very effective. And why not when a man is just about uh, well, less than half your weight? impression it will make. Ah, the drop kick. That's more like it. The distant drop kick. If he can do that and fall back drop kick, he might get his man over there. Very near over the top. <laughs> Quite illegal, of course, to get your man over the top rope intentionally. There's a crowd here that have loved it if you had. Not too little wrestling holes in this one. <laughs> but quite a bit of action. hear what George is saying there. He's arguing with the ref about something. Uh, I don't blame him for being uh, a little hesitant with the handshake.
still haven't reached a handshake. A double-handed beer hold, if ever I saw one. But at least it worried Haystacks for a moment. It's the nearest thing to a wrestling hole we've had so far. way to another public warning if he stays there yes there it is second and final public warning to haystacks round two which means he hasn't got any more of course next one he's disqualified ah that's the one the head butt to the temple that could uh, him some more good, George. And he's trying again to get him out. Jeff K won't allow it. Well, he's back to his corner. The bell did go somewhere in there. And there's the bell to round. Start round three. Still no score. Two public warnings against Haystack. And still George trying to reach him. Came a little too close that time. The back elbow drop. That could be trouble for George. I don't know if he's going to make this. He doesn't look like it. No, that's a knockout. Round three knockout, the winner haystack, but George at least tried to get someone near him during that second round. and cheers for that somewhat naturally and this is how it happened George trying to get at him and he walked him a little too close that landed on his back and just in time for see the back out of his job so Haystack's the winner in round three and he's got something to say We'll be back for this in a couple of minutes for the final of the three-man knockout tourney. Welcome back, Grapple fans. Just in time for the final of the knockout tournament. Ray Steele, the man who got the bye into the final, comes now in first. Ray Steele from Tingley, Wakefield, Yorkshire. The former British heavyweight champion, of course. And there's the trophy held by Donovan, the referee. And his opponent, the favorite here, of course, the Scotsman, Ian McGregor. Ladies and gentlemen, now come to the final of the three-man knockout tournament. And it's going to be wrestled for the six five-minute rounds. Two falls, two submissions, or a knockout will decide the winner. And presented in the blue corner from Wakefield in Yorkshire, Ray Steele. together by the referee Arthur Donovan of Liverpool for the usual pep talk six five-minute rounds two falls to decide this final Seconds away, round one. And here we go for the first round of six and remember the crowd here of course not only all for Ian McGregor because he's a Scotsman but also because he was unfortunate enough to take on a man who had the bye to this final so he's fought already once in this program so steel is all fresh 
and ready to go. It's all done on a draw, of course, this. Very still lucky. Steele, I've always considered one of the best wrestlers in the game today. McGregor hasn't anything like the experience of his opponent here, but he's certainly uh, showing up well these days. Yes, the body check off the ropes, not a very wise thing to do against Steele. Very strong man. Full Nelson now, Steele. Switch to a side headlock. Chancery now. To a front head chancery. And out. Nicely done by McGregor. He's got the chancery, but Steele has his uh, way of conquering that. <laughs> Gently but firmly placing his man right outside the ropes. suddenly there. I don't think anybody heard it. I'm surprised they did. Anyway, that's the end of round one. Ian McGregor. Now resides in Ashton and the line. Ian, the man that Marty Jones started in the game. Protégés. Side head chance for Steele. Both feeling their way very carefully in this final. Neither of them taking any risks at all. Dangerous for McGregor to get into a strength hole like that with Steele. He realized it, so he tries the forearms. <laughs> and Steele obliges with a counter of that, too. Again, Steele starts with the side head chancery, his favorite starting move. Reverses the man and the neck drop. Again, the side head chancery to Steele, exactly the same start to a move. There's the double-handed face bar from the back. Can't possibly score from this, but it might weaken. And there's the bell to end round two. Ray Steele, the former heavyweight champion of Great Britain. 15 stone 12. And he won that title just a little bit less now. He kept really fit. a little thoughtful at the moment. He didn't expect to have quite so much trouble with McGregor as he's having. Round three. round three, no score. And this final for the three-man knockout trophy. A lovely trophy they're fighting for, too.
Steele starting off with a knee, an arm lever this time, right over the shoulder. Back to his side, head chance re again. McGregor does well with those forearm swing uppercuts there. And over the top one, nicely. And a lovely uppercut there. And now Steele's running a little bit. McGregor doing well at this moment. If he can keep this up. <laughs> Leg dive, Steele. Follow down quickly. Looks like he can hold it. Well, the shoulder's not down. Arthur Donovan shaking very carefully with those shoulder blades are touching. They've got to count for stay for three. Back to his favorite side, head chance read still. Now this time he started the trend, the uppercuts. For Nelson Steele. But a little bit late that time, Ray. Now uh, we're in time this time. That knee came up dead right. Now he's got him weakened. Steele could follow this through and for the next stretch, maybe. Yes, he is trying it and he's got it. He's got the submission he's after. In the third round, just two minutes, 15 seconds in round three. First submission fall to Ray Steele. Steele in a great bout that he had with Pete Roberts. I'm sure you grappling fans will remember Pete Roberts, one of the greatest, and that to Croydon way back in uh, May 85 or 6. Really beautiful contest that was. He's got to go again, McGregor, whether he's ready or not. He's still on the canvas. Round four, Bell is gone. And Steele leading McGregor by one submission and a is whether McGregor the favorite here no doubt about that can come back into this he's got this round and two more to do it in trying the second fall and he only wants this one to win it. Set the one shoulder blade off. Double leg grab trying for the Boston. Oh, he spun out, spun him, steal out beautifully there, McGregor, to right over the top rope, just as he was going into the Boston crowd. inside just touching the ropes there anyway so it wouldn't have counted anyway so the bell to win round four and Steele on the right still leading in McGregor the Scotsman by one submission to nil he's only got two rounds now to come back It'd be interesting to see whether he can do it against this ex-champion
A bit worried about that neck, isn't he, on the left? Round five. And Steele coming in with the forearms and the knee up back to his chin. Doesn't look much chance for him here, the way he's going. Ah, that's better, that's better. Two good forearm uppercuts. Steele over the top. Nice further forearm there. Headlock and strangle Steele. And a crotch hold and slam to Steele. And a knee drop. More back weakness. For McGregor to take. Side headlock not very well held. <clears throat> but he gets him over the top of the cross press. Beautifully done by McGregor. What that surprised him. That took him completely unaware, Steele. And Steele a bit mad about it. He's going in for the kill, throwing his man through the ropes. The, the equalizing four is there. But Steele didn't behave the way he used to behave when we used to see him on television before. What a pity. And he's like he's been sent out. There's the drop, attempted drop. McGregor took the fold in nicely. Went over the top, held his man down, got the equalizing fall. And I think that Steele, for his behavior then, has been disqualified. Well, here's the winner, and they're all happy here. Well, that's it, Grapple fans, for this time. Hope you've enjoyed it. Back to you, Robin. So, next week, will the man with the Busby put his opponent on the mat? The man we call Big Daddy is certainly a father figure, but is the immovable object about to be moved? Will it be easy, easy, easy? Or has he met his match? Wrestling keeps you guessing. Till next week's bumper package, let's hustle muscle soon. Time wrestling. Hello, welcome to wrestling. Time to hustle muscle with a star studded lineup. Treading the canvas later, not quite a father and son double, but with a daddy and kid, almost. But first, here's a man we've met already in this series of wrestling. He's a gentleman, but don't be fooled by his charming gestures. Tony Stewart's as mean as the next dude, who, incidentally, I'm backing. I reckon he'll put in a sterling performance. They call him Chick, though he's no coward. The crowd will be calling for Frank Cullen. Kent Walton at ringside. Thank you, Robin. Hello again, Grapple fans. And a welcome to another session. Here's the contestants for the first bout this afternoon. Tony Stewart to start, and his opponent, Frank Chick Cullen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this contest is an England versus uh, Scotland versus Ireland contest, and it's going to be wrestled over six five-minute rounds. It's two falls, two submissions, or a knockout will decide the winner. And on my left, in the blue corner, from Carrot Fergus in Northern Ireland, Tony Stewart. Is 
this opponent representing Scotland tonight from Sterling. In the red corner, Frankie Chick Cullen. So and the Brian referee missing a little error there. Mr. Arthur Donovan. <laughs> England versus Ireland. No, I don't think they have to go down too well with Frank Cullen. Chick Cullen from Sterling on the left there. And his opponent, Tony Stewart. You see, I saw him a few weeks ago against Danny uh, Collins and did very well against a heavier man then. Let's see what he can do today. Six five-minute rounds will tell. Two falls round to one. the side. Bell for round one. Five minutes around. And Chick Cullen in his usual slazzy gear of uh, white and red. Arthur Donovan, the referee from Liverpool there. Tony Stewart's got a tremendous amount of experience against him in the ring here today. He really has. They had a lot of weight difference. Stewart at 11-12. Cullen at 13 stone 4. But doing all right at the moment. Straight arm lever against the joint. Quick height there by Cullen. Going for that same arm lever, holding it against the joint. This time Cullen won't go. Halfway. Stewart doing all the attacking at the moment, all on Cullen's left arm. He even tries a pinfall in the first minute of round one. Oh, that bridge. Cullen in that bridge. Frank Cullen, the flying, known as the Flying Scot all over the, the world, really, has been um, touring quite heavily in Canada, Australia recently. Heavy middleweight champion of Great Britain. There's Tony Stewart, his opponent, in the lower middleweight prize. The uh, heavy middleweight Second to his opponent is going to be a little bit too much for him with an extra stone on, or three quarters of a stone. But he got through the first round, okay, doing the attacking. Let's see what he can do in the second. Five to go. Double finger interlocked. And Stewart trying to complete a bridge out of it and get up from it. Tremendous effort, but he lands up in a Japanese stranglehold. Really beautiful back breaker there with the double knee in the back. Might get a submission from it. I doubted this earlier, but round four or five he might have got a submission from that column. out this time. The blind stretch to Stewart. Has the advantage for the first time in the second round. Go 
course, mostly for Stewart's efforts there. But of course, Cullen's bridge get out was neat too. And inside grapevine, Cullen. Evidently, Stewart really uh, convinced that that left arm was going to weaken so going for it all the time. charge now. <laughs> Let the other arm do that. Just with a face bar and the knees in the right place between the shoulder blades. Back of the neck. that time. If he can hook the leg, he'd have a little more chance there and he'll go for it. Good, Stewart coming back again with that head butt to the stomach. Oh, that knee went down right on the temple there. Post Cullen and he made it. Now now victory roll chance there for Stewart if he goes right the way over, but not too far for Cullen. Cullen stopped it halfway and he's got him. First fall to Chip Cullen. Round two. Counter to a victory roll. Your MC Brian Crabtree. This is how he did it. The neat attempt here after that posting by Stewart to make a victory roll out of this by getting him with the shoulders. If he goes forward and takes his man all the way with him, he'd have won that move. Second but Cullen way, stops him halfway three. on a folding press. Round three, and Cullen now leading uh, Tony Stewart by one fall in the middle. Stewart trying the same thing again, hoping that next time the victory roll might come off. <laughs> but uh, Cullen didn't want him to stay there too much this time. The third move might have worried Curran a bit more than the first two. And take that all day. Now the step over toe hold, that could be more damaging. Cullen trying to get a shoulder press from that counter. Very nearly did it. Got a count of two there. Paul Nelson, Stewart. Side hitch archery. He can't get far forward. And another chance for Stewart, but couldn't hold his man. He's trying now, the boy. He really is, this Irishman from Carrick Fergus, Northern Ireland. Just a little spin of 12 of him. When we saw him a couple of weeks back on television for the first time, we said that uh, we've seen some more of him. I'm delighted to see him again already. Only turned pro last year, oh, the end of 89. Keep it on. Folded leg there. Coming right the back of his neck now. And he could get a submission from this. Oh, 
Figure four leg lock here to steal it. It's the first time he's really worried, uh, Colin, in this round. Time for the double arms. Well, if he can get that up and all the way back, he's got a surfboard. Can't see him doing it from here. Still holding the figure four. I mean, left his head within reach there, a bit dangerous. Yeah. Referee Arthur on, Donovan three, right down on, there yeah. on the spot as always. Colin quite glad to hear the bell there, I think. Yes, I think he's delighted to get back to his corner for a bit of a breather after that. But Sporting shakes the boy's hand as he congratulates him, really, for a very good effort in that third round. This boy who... Uh, several years in the unpaid ranks of uh, wrestling in Lisbon. He Second learned his way, skills. Of course, the hotbed of wrestling, people like Dave Finley come from. And Dave Finley's father is a great trainer there, of course. Round four, three rounds to go. Still Cullen on the left, leading Tony Stewart, one fold of L. <laughs> yes, that came down from a height there. Posting follow-up. Colin intending on uh, damage to the back this time. There's another example of it. Trying to weaken that Stewart back. And again, the backbreaker over the shoulder. Will he get a submission from this? No, slip it off nicely and trying to come back into it, but he's caught on a crutch hold and another body slam. Game fellow, this Irishman, though. And his use of the ropes we saw the other week. Takes his man over for a cross press. If he can grab that leg, he's in business. He's, he's got there. Without even hooking the leg. Excellent effort. The equalizing fall there in round four to Tony Stewart. Ladies and gentlemen, in round four, with a hip tussle and shoulder press, the equalizing fall to Ireland, Tony Stewart! This is how he did it. Took him over for words in a really quick time. But we saw the idea as to how he did that, completed that fall. Seconds away, round five. Round five, two rounds to go. Now one fall each the score. Tony Stewart's made a comeback. Can he continue this good work here? He's starting well. Oh, yes, double leg Nelson, but through the ropes, feet through the ropes, fortunately for Stewart. Out here in Aberdeen, of course, all for Chick Stewart, who actually comes from uh, Cullen, I mean, comes from uh, Sterling. For Nelson Stewart, for Nelson Cullen. The butt and the drop kick. 
came back off the ropes there, Stewart. He certainly wouldn't like to that to have happened if he had avoided it. Speciality is known to be the quick switch from defense to attack, Stuart, and we've certainly seen that in this play on several occasions. And but this time we couldn't have it right. Toe and ankle. Colored in charge now. Board this time. One leg set, two legs set. Now can he get the arms back? That's one. Wrist lock on one of them. Now can he get the other arm? He's in position for it now, Cullen. Can he take his man right over and back? If he does, he should get a submission from it. There's the surfboard nearly there, but not quite enough. <coughs> Stewart somehow managed to get out of that. I think the slip. Cullen's hand slipping on the sweaty wrists of his opponent. Saved Stewart from that surfboard. Colin a bit angry that he failed with that last surfboard effort, so coming in with the forearms now and the chops. Oh, nicely reached drop kick from the floor. Guns to it attacking, half Nelson. Forearm uppercut. He's a game for us, man. Inside of the forearm, off the ropes, walked right into it. And another attempt, but this time he ducked underneath it and took exactly the same move on his opponent. Bit early that back elbow gets away. All the way back for a drop and the follow up cross press and trouble here for Stewart. No, gets the left shoulder off. Cullen hooks the leg, but still, Stewart, that's the left shoulder off. I think he's, tre he's tremendous, this boy, how he comes back from the brink of real trouble this time. And again, now on the attack, Stewart. Cullen goes in a bridge, and anyway, he wouldn't have got uh, a pinfall from it because the bell went to end round five. Colin, the first to congratulate Tony Stewart on that effort. He really had the round in his pocket. Now let's have a look at the both. Colin on the left there in the white gear, white and red. Stewart, the young fellow from Carrick Fergus, Northern Ireland, and still in there with Seconds a chance. He's still on level the points, sixth, one for each. Round. One fall, each wrestler. And now we've got the final round, round six. I wouldn't put it past you to spring a surprise here. 
He's come back so many times from the brink. The next score is the one that counts here. Stewart on the attack. Clutch hold. Body slam. Goes down far too late. Colin will easily get out of thing like that. Follow it, but he came up to the top rope and come down a lot of longest way possible to pull weight on him. That must have weakened Stewart. He's still getting up, double leg grab, and would be trouble for Stewart here. Face down drop. Taking him beautifully over the top, and he's hooked the leg perfectly this time. No chance for Stewart to get out of that. And there it is, the winning fall, round six, Chick Cullen from Sterling Scotland. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after six terrific rounds of wonderful wrestling skill, we have the winner by two falls to one to Scotland, the red corner, Frankie Chick Cullen. This is how he did it, just quickly off the ropes, to bring his man over to place and watch the now quickness of that uh, leg this hook. This young boy from Northern Ireland is from Carrot Fergus near Belfast, and it's only his second season in professional wrestling. I think you'll agree with me, doing a great job. How about a round of applause now, Frankie? Oh, Tony Stewart! Very much deserved round of applause there. Well, stick around. Much more to come on wrestling. After the break, a one-off ten-point knockout contest featuring Greg Valentine, he's a card, and Roughhouse Rex Lane. And the main event is Big Daddy about to take custody of another victim. Let's ask Kate. I've got a champion here for you. This is my champion, and he's never, ever been beaten. And he'll take anybody on in the world. And Big Daddy, what are we going to do to Big Daddy? That's right. What are you hey, doing Hey, you here? get out of here! Hey. Get out of here! Get out of that dressing room! I will not! Ah. Welcome back. The seriously awesome Count Von Zuppi. You caught a glimpse of him just before the break. He's been expelled from Big Daddy's dressing room. I don't think he was after an autograph, but the two get grappling in part three. That's after this ten-pointer. Well, welcome back as the next two contestants come out of the ring. Rex Lane from Stockton. 14 stone six. Little ponytail at the back there. His opponent, farmer's boy Greg Valentine from Millbank, West Yorkshire, at 14 stone 10. It's four pounds weight advantage, but this is no ordinary contest. This is, is a knockdown contest. Any part of the body touches the, the canvas, apart from the soles of the feet, it's a point to the opponent. This will be explained, of course, more thoroughly by Brian Crabtree, your MC. Ladies and gentlemen, Special contest, and it's a knockdown contest to be wrestled over 20 minutes duration. There's going to be no falls, no submissions. The only way one of the wrestlers can win this contest is to put his opponent down on the canvas 10 times. First to reach 10 will be the winner. First of all, introducing on my left in the blue corner from Teesside, Rough House. Rex Lane! Here's the opponent in the red corner. Would you welcome, please, the dynamic Craig Valentine! 
The referee for this contest from the East Coast, from Hull, Mr. Jeff Kay. Jeff Kay, the referee, making sure that everybody knows the rules, I think, before they'll start. And uh, Jeff Kay, of course, a very renowned welterweight a contestant in his own right. Very well, as the referee once made. again wants to point out, it's any part of the wrestler's body that touches the floor, apart from his feet, will be counted as a knockdown. Okay? Laying in the blue corner, Valentine in the red. So they mustn't even touch the, the canvas with the, even one hand. I think we should see more of this type of contest. It's uh, great fun. This will be counted for you by the timekeeper. Seconds away. 20 minutes. No rounds. No falls. No submissions. No knockouts. Just knockdowns. Ten of them to win this bout. usual white gear. Seven, having trailed five-one at 
at a time earlier on. Well, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of that match, the winner, ten to Greg Valentine. <laughs> Just to make sure that he uh, doesn't come out of the situation. Big Daddy likes to act the goat sometimes, but he can also be gruff. Well, after the break, you'll see him team up with the kid, Johnny Kid, to take on the might of the Count and John Wilkie. See you after the break. Big Daddy gets the last word as his fans sign off. It's tag team time, and here is Klondike Kate, the manager of her team, and her team is Wilkie, John Wilkie of Hanley Potteries, followed by Count Von Zuppi, his first time on television in the UK, so I don't know too much about him. He's about six foot three, 18 stone, I believe. at 20 stone, a British ladies wrestling champion, Klondike Kate. Yay! And their men, Count Von Zippy and Wellman John Wilkie. Well, I have no fear because Big Daddy's here right in this building. Come on, kids, let's give our Big Daddy a big round of applause. We shall not be moved.
says the ex Cold Stream Guardsman. He's removing his bearskin. Oh, not yet. He's getting in the ring with it this time. And his partner, Johnny Kidd from Luton. And team time with a 20 minute duration. Two falls, two submissions, and two knockouts. Decide the winner. has as his partner the 12 stone six middleweight Johnny Kidd and a great wrestler he is too Jeff K in charge of this one 20 minutes tag two falls two submissions two knockouts two disqualifications to decide second way <laughs> <laughs> they haven't even started yet. Johnny Kidd pretty good with the drop kick, even without help. Both of them coming at Daddy at the same time. Fatal move. Trying to get those legs up. <laughs> that isn't easy. Vainly, Jeff K, the referee, trying to tell them, or one of them, to get out of the ring, out of the tag rope. Big Daddy's opponents recently are spending an awful lot of time outside the ring. So, finally, it's John Wilkie versus Johnny Kidd. Kidd in the white. See what a lovely mover this boy is. Project excellent. Yeah, speedy. And the drop kick follow up. Yeah. Big Daddy comes in to help Kid there because uh, he's doing the treatment from both of them in the opposite corner. Referee trying to get Todd Day Kate out of the way now. <laughs> I bet he's got all three of them there. Yeah. Which one of them at least rather be? Not not. Public warning to Big Daddy. Yes, Big Daddy got in the ring when he shouldn't have. First public warning. And the opponents both get encountered. John Wilkie finally comes back against Johnny Kidd. There, but no, he didn't need posting head first. And the opposite corner, but this time Zoppy is on the receiving end. All four of them there <laughs> until Daddy appears. 
once again, rolling two. Both on the same side. Versus Wilkie. First public warning, Count von Zuppi. That's for using the foot. The ropes there. Zuppi in on a tag this time. Wilkie goes out. So it's Zuppi. Zuppi versus Johnny Kidd. There and it tagged at the same time by Kid. In comes Daddy. Well, she seems to be happy about it. Out goes Wilkie. Turned out Kate, not happy at all. Especially now, it's not here. Joins them outside the main once more. Will key back in versus Kid. Holding press and Kid in trouble here, but the ropes, the feet were on the ropes, and I'm not sure they weren't being held by Fonsuppi. Good fall if it's legal. Let's see what they say. Something tells me that uh, won't be disallowed. second and final public point. So, still in the first session of this tournament contest, and still Wilkie versus Johnny Kidd. Suppy ready with his foot there. Count von Zuppi received his second and final public warning. Well, he was spotted then by Jeff Kay, so he gets his second and final public warning as well. Zuppi versus Kelly. Didn't get a tag then, Big Daddy, so get out, he's told. Back under your tag rope. Five of them in there now. I, uh, Kate goes out temporarily. Back in again. Daddy's told to get out. In the meantime, in the opposite corner, Mayhem is loose. Full Nelson to Wilkie as Zoppy delivers the. John Wilkie receives his first public warning. And it's Wilkie gets a public warning for that. So five public ones have been dished out so far. Two to Big Daddy, two to Von Suppy, and one to John Wilkie. This is the only boy that hasn't got one. Now, can he get over to the corner and tag Big Daddy? Who should be doing it over the top rope there. Hannah Splash. 
Nice fold of Big Daddy and Johnny Chad. Second Here we go for the second session. Daddy and Ted leading Zuppi from Zuppi and Wilkie by one fold to nil. And it's Ted versus Wilkie trying a folding press and he gets, uh, uh, he gets one. That looks like two nil. Unless there's a beef about that. Kate is certainly beefing about it. No, it looks like a two nil win for Daddy and Ted. suffering in this corner and Fonsaki getting his mask pulled away if you can't stop it mask wrestlers are open to be demasked if they're defeated and he's been defeated so we still don't know who he is or what he looks like Other winners, two to nil. When Big Daddy's on the bill, there's a total guarantee of entertainment. He's the big in, but that name is more fitting for one of next week's stars, Rory Campbell, a brave man who's been drawn against giant haystacks. I think it's true to say you'd have more chance of finding a proverbial needle than finding me if my name was thrown into the ring with the giants. Truly wicked. Let's hustle muscle soon. Cuts not really working. Thirty seconds to go. Well, if McGregor can hold on for a draw, he'd be quite happy against this uh, light heavyweight champion of Great Britain. Trying to crutch hold and slam just once more. McGregor follows down, but he hasn't got the leg, and he probably won't get him off now. No problem. Trying once more for a full Boston Crab on the bell of the final round. So a good effort by McGregor to stay with him, but he couldn't quite work that Boston Crab to finish his man off if it had. Probably wouldn't have got a submission there. Anyway, it's a draw and a pretty good effort by McGregor against this big man. Now, ladies and gentlemen, wrestling personified there, and an excellent contest for both competitors. I'm going to ask for you a round of applause for Ian McGregor and Alan Kelby, the referee's decision and draw. Well, at the beginning of the show, Rory Campbell squares up to giant haystacks. I think you could say we've got a grudge match in our hands here. Remember the quote, Haystacks implied the only good thing to come out of Scotland is the road to England. Rory said nothing about the M25, but the congestion there will be comparable to the lack of space in the ring. Rory has perhaps already retorted by entering the ring first, and who's to argue with him? Yes, welcome back, Rapper fans, in time for the giant Haystacks himself. From Salford, Lancashire, Luke McMaster's 40 stone odd. 
six foot eleven in height. And today he's up against a maestro bling of 18 stone one. In the shape of Rory Campbell. Oh, grabbed by haystacks and thrown. That'll endear him to the public here for sure. <laughs> right in the heart of Aberdeen, they'll love that. And he gets a public warning for it. First public warning to haystack before the bell of round one. <laughs> That's a pretty quick public warning even for haystack. Seconds away, round one. Here we go with the bout. Haystack versus Rory Campbell. Giant Haystack, Luke McMasters from Salford, Lancashire, and Rory Campbell from Edinburgh. A mere 18 stone, six foot four. Still looks pretty small by comparison, doesn't he? Campbell, of course, seven inches shorter and his opponent today, and well under half his weight. to the side of the neck, Haystack's favorite, one of them. Thumb's doing the damage there. Referee Jeff Kay quite happy that they weren't anywhere near the uh, windpipe. Unnecessary for this big man to break all these rules, really. Illegal use of the ropes, quite unnecessary. He's got the power and the strength. He doesn't really wait. What does he want on his side? And out he goes through the top two. That'll be an over the top one. Yes. Um, Campbell complaining about the hair grab. Already one public warning against Haystack. 
Make the point about there. Side of the forearm, yes, perfectly legal that one. But of course, he's got the height to operate it very successfully. Campbell trying to grab the leg to get him off balance. And the crowd right behind him is love to see Haystacks right on his back in the middle of the ring here. this time. Jeff K very politely saying, do you mind waiting till he gets up, please? Keep him away, but what chance has he got? A mere world away. Campbell a little bit too late on that. Telegraphed it. Haystack for so often before got in first. Held to end round one. And still after the bell as this is won't. Haystacks gets one quick one in. What a giant this fellow. Rory Campbell, everybody hoping he can do something before he... Second way, round two. Before he gets completely caught in on. We go for round two. Let's see if he can get his man off the canvas just once. It's a good start. Fast. Now take it easy, Rory. Yeah, take it easy, or he walks straight into that one. And now the splash. A full 42 stone out down on him. And he's liable to stay there after that one. It's nine. Now that's it. Knockout round two. Haystacks does it again by a knockout. Seems unfair that anybody should have to fight a man so heavy as this, but of course there are not enough fighters to take him on. And his weight back. 48 seconds of round two. Winning by a knockout, Campbell. Fails to beat the count. The giant Haster. They don't take more than one Scotchman. Tatrap, come on, here. Well, after the break, the return of Andy Robin, who does battle with the masked red phantom. But first, here's a bit of real bare-faced cheek that'll have the fur flying, and that's straight from the wrestler's mouth. Well, surprise, surprise, who do we have here then? None other than Hercules the Bear, watching himself on television. He's quite content to do that, but we are more interested 
in Andy Robin, who's about to take on the Red Mast Phantom. We join it at round one. Second away, round one. Yes, indeed, Robin. Andy Robin's the man we're interested in here, and he's taking on the Red Phantom, the masked Red Phantom. Don't know who he is, don't know his weight, don't know anything about his experience. It's going to be interesting. He's a big man, that's for sure. But Andy Robin, a very powerful fellow from Stirling in Scotland, 14 stone two. And even without Hercules the bear, a tough adversary. A six five minute round contest. Two falls to the side this. And is Andy Robin in his usual light blue trunks, white boots. Referee Jeff K. Jack Stranglehold, Robin. Trying to undress it. And only halfway. Tall fella, Phantom. Six foot two or three. Don't know what his speciality is or anything about him. He wouldn't say a word to me in the dressing room before the bar. Blind side, but the referee spotted it. Yes, yeah, a punch to the to Andy Robin's left eye. Obviously, here comes another if he gets away with it and get away with it. Well, he can let his man up. And another public warning for that, for sure. That's the final one. One more public warning and he's disqualified. <laughs> Andy Robin's eyes seem to be suffering here. I'm just wondering what the Phantom is doing, he's doing something out of a waistband there and trying to put rub it into Andy Robin's eye, I think. Looks highly dicey to me. The question is, has the referee spotted it or not? To be sure for one thing, Andy Robin knows about it. Punches those cause the trouble in Randy Robin's eyes. Must have been using something there. Anyway, there's the bell for the end of round one. Two public warnings against the Phantom. Otherwise, no score. And the 
Schwartzman really suffering with his eyes there. But he's got to go for round two. We do know Andy Robbins' speciality, of course, with his famous power lock, which is lethal. And Phantom taking the cushioning off the post here, far corner on the left, in order to, in order to post Robin, but he got posted himself against the metal. And Robin coming in now with a couple of his own tricks. And this could be the power. It is the power lock. This is the power lock. And, and the Phantom is, I wouldn't want to be him now. That is a lethal hold. And if he leans back now, it's, a, it's going to be even worse. There he goes. <laughs> and he gets a submission he's after. to help the referee there much. Well, Maybe having trouble with his eyes, Andy Robin, but he sure hasn't forgotten how to put that power lock on. I remember him showing me that in the dressing room one day. Oh, agonizing move it is. To be the wrong end of. On three. Andy Robin le leading by one submission to nil. And I don't think he's going to go on. No, he didn't get up in time. The Red Phantom didn't make the count. So therefore, but Robin's still going to try and get the power lock on again. If I know Robin, yes, there it is. Just to make sure he's in charge of the entire situation. And he's trying to unmask him as well. Yes, unmarked. Well, there he is, the Red Phantom. In close-up. Doesn't, he doesn't want to be seen much, but... Uh, at least we know roughly what he looks like now. Well, here comes Joe. Here he is, the man himself. Of course, Brian Crabtree, your master of ceremonies. Jeff Kay, your referee in charge of this one. A catchweight contest, six five-minute rounds, two falls to the side. Danny Boy Collins, Bristol, versus Tony Stewart of Carrick Fergus, Northern Ireland. It's Collins in the trunks on the left there, pink trunks. Danny Boy, of course, still has, uh, undefeated in his welterweight championship bids of a few years back. But of course he gained weight, so he had to relinquish the title. Tony Stewart, we don't know too much about him because this is his first year of professional wrestling. He's been less than a year pro. But from what I've heard, he should be pretty good and we'll be seeing a lot of him. Let's see what happens against one of the champions. Landed on the jaw then. Then he just checking his bottom teeth. Trying again, double leg Nelson this time, Stuart. Face barred off it. Still worried about the bottom teeth, Danny. Front head chance for reversed. Stewart nicely out there, that double wrist knock. Oh, 
see if he's as quick to get out of this one. But it's my bet that Daniel will probably plant him in the corner on the post. Yes, he generally does that when he's, especially in the early rounds. Tony Stewart, 11 stone 12, giving away quite a bet to 13 stone 2, Colin. Paul Nelson, Stewart, side head chance for a throw, and the bell interrupts his move. Well, Danny, I know what he's after now. He's after one of the heavier titles. That young lady would like to see him get it. He's only a very good-looking lad, though he's put on a lot of weight since... Uh, and that's why I'm on television. Danny from Bristol started at 16 years old in four ranks. The bell for round two and no score. Collins now starting to go for that uh, Stewart left arm. Jack Stranglehold. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. That's the first off a top four on smash of the boat. Back to the semi Jack Stranglehold, Collins. Unwinds his man, but this time Stuart nicely back dropped him. Get out of trouble. Nice move, Stuart. Posting, follow up with a monkey climb attempt. A two far over in Collins land. Truck kick just above makes it. The right foot. Again, the monkey climb attempt, but Danny waiting for him in the folding press and trouble here for Stuart. Yes, he is in trouble. It's the first ball to Danny Collins in just about one minute, 15 seconds in round two. second and here's how he did it. Thanks for posting. Doesn't he turns on the post. Tries the monkey clams to it. And as he then he comes towards him, he just folds the body over and there's the press. Round three. round three and Collins now leading Collins on the right there and the trunk pink trunk with the boy written right across the back. Leading Tony Stewart of Ireland by one fold of them. Stay down for three from that position. Not unless he's severely weakened. Collins working on the back of Stewart now. Oh yes, oh, beautiful back high back drop. Just the same, remember? Back week there to Collins. The posting and the forearm, inside of the forearm, follows it through. Yes, the instep gets in, completes the somersault for him. Three, Danny Collins tries another fold. Mm. Very near. Count of two and a half there. Jeff K, the referee, just didn't get the word three out. Fortunately, the steward. Collins has really been planting some weakness on this Irishman. Collins held it perfectly. And he can't get his right 
Can I have my right arm back? <laughs> Nicely over the top, Stuart. Mm -hmm. Just a little too early. Colin's not worried enough. He's smiling. He's not in the mood quite to go for that folding press as he did. Tony Stewart showing up well, but he's up against a very tough opposition here today. Carrick Fergus, Northern Ireland, Livingstone 12, several years in the unpaid ranks in Lisbon, the hotbed of amateur wrestling, of course, where stars such as Dave Finley came Next from. Round four. round four, still Danny Collins leading Tony Stewart of Ireland by one fold to nil. Oh, Stuart might have him from underneath. No. Good effort there by Tony Stewart. Suddenly came back into this boat for a moment. Bill Collins worrying about that bad landing he had. And it's that left arm that's getting in trouble again. Oh, nice move at the top rope. The referee let it go. And he takes his man over, follow with the cross pose. If he can grab that leg, now he's got him. And there's the equalizer. Round four, just a minute and a half into it. Some referees let that go, some don't. Jeff K. did. Nice move by Stewart all the way through until that final folding press. Beautifully done. And he gets him back into the bow to the start of round five. One fall each now. And two rounds to go. The next score is the one that matters here. And that's what he reached. Some of his own back for early rounds now. Doing quite well until that walk into the ropes. <laughs> Danny waiting for him with his foot. And let's follow up. Forearm smash to the chest. And over the top of the backdrop again. Danny in the bridge. Danny taking the full weight in the wrestler's bridge there. Double arm. Now, oh, which one is stronger? Not doing well at the moment. But both went down, and the referee's going to break him up, the stalemate.
up that left arm court again. Now, just in time he got out of it and reversed the situation by grabbing Danny's left arm. <laughs> Tried to slow whip him forward, but Collins wouldn't go. Back hammer now, do it. Still the double wrist lock. Follow up with that inside of the forearm. Oh, he turned beautifully, Stuart, then. <laughs> and then he didn't quite what happened there. He's never seen that. I don't think. I don't think I have. Very good move. Didn't quite bring off the final touch, though. Drop kick nicely, banging out. Over the top rope. So landed quite well. Yeah, no problem. He's <laughs> too a bit too near him as he came in. Back over the throat. Both men being counted. So it's Stewart's first effort of a forearm uppercut there. Then he had a mule kick because he came in too close. There's a heavy backdrop again by Collins. Double arm over the feet, very neat. If he can drag Collins all the way back and over and hold that shoulder press, Collins could be in trouble. But the feet are through the ropes and the bell goes to the end of the run. So Stuart doing very well in that last round. There he is on the right. He's just got one round to go. Can he hold it against this man who's got very much more experience in the pro ranks than he has, of course. Second away for the sixth and final round. One fall each. Will there be a result here, or will it be a one fall each draw? And Tony Stewart hold on for another five minutes. Quickly operated in this case, it is too. Watch hold, do it, slam. Doesn't bother to follow it yet. Trying to get his man weakened a little bit. Oh, right against that left arm, you could feel that. He's been taking some treatment for this bout, but that's not going to help it one bit. Now, of course, Colin sees a chance now for a straight arm with. And he's out for a submission winner. Stuart not giving. But he's still tucked that left arm. A bit of trouble to say the least. He's going for it some more. He's got another straight arm lift position if he wants it. There it is, and takes his man down the back, but does he hold? No. Folding press, and Danny might be able to hold. He's got the arms locked. Very near thing. Count of two there. Nice. Face down, knee drop. Again, Collins dishing out the treatment for this unfortunate Irishman. Nice switch by Stewart. Again the left arm. Again the finger into lock. Oh, again that use of the ropes by Stewart. Very neat that. Can he follow it up this time and make a score of it? No. Caught. Nice stuff. Double arm. Danny taking advantage over the top of the further press. And I think he can hold this. Yes. Did he make it? Just made it. Yes, he's a happy boy. Stuart 
a little disappointed, but he did very well indeed. A win for Collins, two to one, and round six. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after a very match will come down in the sixth and final round, we have the winner by two for the one, Danny Hoy. Well, once again, the double arm, that's where it started, the trouble for Stewart, holding the shoulder press, and he could not get out of it this time. A big hand for Stewart, and quite rightly. Excellent first effort in front of the television cameras. the team on the right there, and Miranda Conda and Kamikaze. And you've seen them before the tag team. There's another man in there with a white suit on. That, of course, is Big Daddy, the ex team guardsman. He's taking his bare skin off, and his partner just behind him there, Johnny Kidd from Luton. thrown out of the ring right at the start. And Big Daddy starts against Anaconda. And of course, anybody coming in at that angle without leaning very far forward gets thrown very easily by this 24 stone giant here. Especially when Kamikaze tries it, he's only a lightweight by comparison. <laughs> oh, I don't think they're going to be around too long with a little bit. Count von Zoffi, there he is, the front of the white suit we saw earlier. He's here to challenge Big Daddy. He's part of the team belonging to Von Dyke Cape. Then. We'll be seeing him in a week or two's time. Johnny Kidd now versus Kamikaze. The purple mask and tights. Don't know anything about this fellow, Lord. Don't know his weight, where he comes from, anything about it. But Johnny Kidd, this is very interesting. No doubt about that. Nice neat drop kick by Kamikaze. Uh oh, over the top. Hold on. Kid unawares there. That double arm chop blocked it. And Anaconda is in already. He hasn't been tagged. I don't know what he's doing in, but Johnny Kid's holding them both in that corner. And Big Daddy's in the ring, but he doesn't really have to be. Johnny Kid's doing fine by himself at the moment. <laughs> it's the two men on the same side. Anaconda. And Kamikaze on the same side. And one's up here and come back to furious about this. But it was their own fault. Johnny Kidd caught them both right up against the corner post. So now the only one team in the ring at the moment. The other two are right out. Daddy and Johnny Kidd waiting for the point. They're getting counted. And in comes Kamikaze with the time. 
Benny Kidd. And a punch. Blind side of the referees. I don't think he knows about it. <laughs> Benny Kidd taking them both again. And Betty in once more. And it, both of them clear out when they see Betty over the ropes. And once again, we've got a situation where one team's in the ring and the other team out. And Kate not happy about the situation, one bit. Sonny Kid waits patiently for Kamikaze to come to him. And it's just Kay, the referee, a bit suspicious about that move. Up close near the eye. Yes, that the front's up. He's still outside there giving advice. Anaconda in against Kid. Headbutt to the forehead. And I'm afraid that Daddy's giving me a public warning here. Yes, there's the yellow card for a Big Daddy. Anaconda versus Ted, but now the switch has been made on the peg. And Daddy against both of them. Animal Anaconda. Looks more than seen them. <laughs> both of them being thrown all over the place here. Daddy telling Thorndike like Craven exactly what he thinks of it. And her team. Still, only one team in the ring. Big Daddy on his tag rope in the corner, and it's Johnny Ted taking out. Animal in the combat is big man of 25 stars. Oops. Posting follows that butt. And the backbreaker over the shoulder. And it's a submission. The first submission, I think. Yes. Sonny Kid forced to submit with that backbreaker over the shoulder. But his feet were being held outside the ring. And Daddy's curious about that, because he knows it. what Brian Crabtree has to say about that. The rest is alive. The referee spotted his partner, Kamikaze, holding the feet outside. But, uh-uh. Daddy's got another yellow card. So, two public warnings to Big Daddy, and still no fall or submission because it was just a lot. In comes Al Conde, and there's Kamikaze finishing it up. Look at Ray Boy diving at this big man like that, but he's just a tag in, and Daddy can come in legitimately now, or can he? No, not until this case, says no, not yet. Johnny Kidd's got to go out and tag properly over the top rope first. In the meantime, Kidd on the right there is getting a little treatment from Kamikaze on his tag rope. And a yellow card to Kamikaze. And he's getting in again. So is Daddy. And the rope, the tag rope is round Johnny Kidd's neck now, so Anaconda comes straight into the punches. But the referee is busy in the other corner. Hasn't spotted it yet. Yes, he was spotted. He got his second time public warning for it. So two public warnings against Big Daddy, two against Kamikaze. In the meantime, Anaconda goes down for a splash effort on Johnny Kidd. And still getting the count. Kid's still getting the count. 
can he crawl over? And he's got the tag. He's got the tag. So in comes Daddy now, and maybe the opponents will disappear once more. <laughs> can the he really has? Anaconda here now. Just a sidestep. The splash could follow this. There it is, the full weight of Daddy, and he'll never get up from that. So there's the first ball, the big daddy of Johnny Kidd. And this 20 minute tag contest. Second session. There we go, it's Anaconda. He's got to continue against Patty, whether he likes it or not. Already weakened from the last splash. And an easy posting there. So Patty kind of tries it now. And there's the big backdrop. He's already taken a cushioning off his post on the right for his own use, but there is no sorry he did. And I think they're going. I think they've had enough. They're both way back to this year. So for technical luck how it will be if they do, soon they can't actually cares for that team. And why not? They've moved up. comes the white suit and count one Zuppy to issue the challenge against Big Daddy. Finger pointing going on, a lot of anger. Whether Daddy will agree to the challenge, we'll see. <laughs> what is wrong with that lady? <laughs> anyway, a win on a technical knockout by Big Daddy and Johnny Kidd over Anaconda and Thomas Pazzi, the team of Trondike Kidd. <laughs> this one that cake getting posted now. Well, being a Scot, there should be charges brought against Anaconda after what he did to that St. Andrew's flag. May he be incarcerated in a half Nelson forever. Well, whether you're half Scottish or not, our next event burns with excitement. Join us after the break.
when you're interlocked. And uh, when Shelby starts that, he often for a real kick, but he didn't try it this time. Crutch hold, slam to Mitchell. Tackle attempt, but Kilby got in first. That's thrown off in time. And this time it's Kilby in trouble on holding press. Yes, it is. He's hooked the leg nicely, and it's the first ball to Jake Mitchell. And round three, it's about two and a half minutes gone, just a little less. who was trained by the great Cyril Knowles, Peters, one of the very famous. There he is again, doing that uh, beautiful move into the one that really worked for him. This is the one, and it overbalanced Kilby, and he held it Second away, round four. Round four, and Mitchell on the right there, in the black tights, leading Al Kilby by one to nil. Headlock Mitchell. And a drop. The foot landed nicely. Forearm came across the stomach. And he came off the ropes. What caused the damage there? He'll be starting to use his strength. Shape before they go back to their corners. I was saying earlier, Jake Mitchell on the right there, a protege of the Cyril Knowles Peters, one of the great light heavyweights, unfortunately died very recently. But his proteges live on, and this is one of them. Seconds away, round five. Round five, and still Jake Mitchell of Leeds, still leading Al Kilby, settled by one fall to nil. Got him on the canvas an awful lot, but doesn't seem to be following him down to get that equalizer he's after. Maybe a few more weaknesses like that first.
Everybody thought that was funny except uh, Craig Mitchell. special. He does a lot of damage with that one. And it's a crutch hold. A body slam, follow down. If he can hook that leg and he's got the left leg hooked, so he'll hold it. There's the equalizer. And round five. Just over two and a half minutes in the room. Seven. One fall each here. Kilby on the left versus Jake Mitchell. Jake Mitchell, incidentally, always used to do his training in Ernie Baldwin's famous gym. Grapple fans of a few years back will certainly remember the great heavyweight champion of Great Britain, Ernie Baldwin. anyway, they wouldn't have counted. That's it. The bell goes to end the count of ten. So by a knockout, Alan Kirby the winner in round seven. Well decide the winner. Presenting on my left in the blue corner, the challenger from Bristol, from the West Country, Danny Boy Collins. Defending his title in the red corner, the world and heavyweight champion from Oldham in Lancashire, Marty Jones! And our referee, Mr. Jeff Kay. Jeff Kay in charge of this title bout. There's the close-up of the world mid-heavyweight belt, which is up for grabs here. The end of this contest, maybe Marty will be wearing it, maybe his opponent, the challenger, Danny, Danny Boy Collins. Right, will gentlemen, be you both know this is a championship contest. In the event of you being disqualified, Jones automatically Collins gets the belt. But I don't think that will happen. I'd like to see good championship wrestling. Shake hands and may the best man win. Draw. Oh, the, sorry, Marty. In the event of a draw, obviously you retain the belt. Thank you. Yes, if it's a draw, of course, the champion retains the belt. The Second away, round one. Round one, 12 three-minute rounds. 
as to three falls. As two falls, two submissions, or a knockout will decide the winner here. Marty Jones at 14-12. Danny Boy Collins at 13-2. So well under the mid-heavyweight bracket. But they are always allowed to go up a weight if they can get the contest. To persuade the promoter to give a chance, they might as well go up a contest and, and get it. He just could pull off a surprise here. One thing is for absolutely certain, the champion Marty Jones will know he's been in a contest at the end of it. Manchester, the man who beat uh, Bobby Coco Gitano of France at the Fairfield Hall Croydon in the 80s to take the title and he's held it ever since. Round two, no score. Collins doing the countering, or attempting to. He's up against a man stone heavier, stone plus. Side head chantry now to Collins. He's trying the grapevine on the leg, but uh, doing it'll help him. He hasn't got the reach. the arm lever. Another figure into lock. Jones back on the attack. Doesn't take him too long to get back in there. Single into lock goes for the opposite arm. Right against the joint, but the bell saves Collins that time. Collins, born in 1967, which makes him around 23, I think. He won the World Weight title, the Royal Albert Hall in March 84, off Jim Brakes. But he has to relinquish that now because he's just a little bit too heavy in the middle weights. So, all three, no score. a bit more now, Collins. Went about too low there. It's a double leg, Nelson Jones. Leg chop gets him off. That's the knee coming up to the stomach. Perfectly lethal. Well, he went down, but not because Collins made him, because he wanted to. And he landed right on Collins' right arm there. Oh, 
He's come back off the ropes there, but Collins. Knees, knees hit the canvas first. Oh, beautifully in step, chasing Jones over very quickly indeed. Not bad for a boy who only just recently had one kidney removed. Following it up with the touch hold and body slam. Coming into his own a bit now, Collins. Leg dive. Marty Jones gets in there quick, locks it off, but it doesn't do him any good because the bell to end round three. Still no score in this uh, world mid heavyweight title bout. Collins on the left, boy written on his trunks. Challenger and Marty Jones, the champion. Through Collins with a good follow up that kick. This time Jones is waiting for it and he's a folding press and trouble for Collins here. No, he gets out of it and rolls out somehow. Jones hadn't got those wrists really definitely held. Nice backdrop. to a man of nearly 15 stone. Not bad at it. Takes his man over folding press, but the ropes, the foot through the ropes. This part really waking up now, it's really... And that arm stretch there really put it Got Danny into a lot of trouble, but the bell saved him on that occasion. Not sure about this boy. This one, pretty sure about him. Quiet, confident, no problems. But Danny has got problems. His left arm, his left leg will be wearing in. There we go for round five of 12. Too long, and the doctor's arrived. Now, the first forearm uppercuts in the boat, and the third one did it. Well, the hit back to the forehand. That might slow the champion up just a little bit. Waist hold attempt blocked completely and countered with the in interlocked fingers. Holding the arm against the joint and the straight arm lift and the back drop following it. Can he get Jones over? He can, but it won't do him any good. Nice moves by both men though. Oh, the drop kick by Jones this time and that landed well. Uh, 
seven. We've got to hurry, Danny. There she's up. But in time to get another one right on the jaw from Jones off the top rope. And it looks trouble for Danny Paul Trollinsky. Up at eight. But Jones goes over in a folding press. It should be pretty easy as man's considerably weakened after those drop takes. And there's the first fall in round five to Martin Jones. what he was doing he drop kicked him twice that was the second one and directly Danny got up at the count of eight Jones moved in for the kill second way round six round six seven rounds to go Danny wisely keeping away for the moment he's trading by one four goes for the attack on a straight arm. Lever right against the joint. Legs and both arms holding it against the joint. Now, a bit unfortunate for Danny here. He says Jones can't move, so he's got him exactly where he wants him, except the shoulder blades are not touching the canvas. So he won't score from it. And he certainly wouldn't so met from that. it on can Danny counter this he often does it by trying to crawl through the legs of his opponent I'll see if he can do it today yeah, he's trying to grab the legs to pull Jones legs back so that he can get up through them yes he's done it out of the Boston but back in it again position. He's done it again. He's free for the moment. Toe and ankle. He spins his man. Spins his man out before he can get the hold on. Monkey climb. No. Somersault over the back. The forearm to the, the throat. But it's Danny Clay Clay. has got a chance here. If he can hook that leg hard enough and hold his shoulder blades down, he's got him. He's got him. Danny's back in it with an equalizing fall in round seven. Beautiful move. Always the first to congratulate his opponent. And this is how it happened. Max Somersault, after fooling his man that he was going for a monkey climb, took his man beautifully over there, grabs the leg before he's got a chance to get those shoulder blades off, and that's it. So the equalizer comes in round seven. Here we go for round eight. Five rounds to go. One each. Now, Danny can just get one more score here. He's got the belt and the title of the heavyweight champion. You see Danny putting another surprise like that again. He did it in the last round. Jones will be watching very closely to that. 
it over the top. Good stomach throw. Both men on the ropes. And therefore, it's going to be a break for the referee's going to step in. They didn't last anyway. Counting them both. Up at nine. And it, oh, it looks very much like a pile driver from Jones here. Collins can't get out of it. I believe he can. He's on the way to the pile driver, but Danny does it and tries to reverse the situation, but it was too short range. The pile driver didn't really work. And a miss, oh, by a long way there. Flying tackle miss. But this one didn't miss. Jones takes it over the top and he goes with him. So they both go out of the ring. Now it's just a question of which gets back in time. Collins looks the one with the back, back trouble. Jones back in already. He's up. Now can he beat the count? He'll have to hurry. No, he's not made it. And this is how it happened again. Jones takes his man right out onto the floor outside the ring. Collins fails to beat the count. Therefore, the champion, Marty Jones. Marty Jones winning by a knockout in round eight. But what a good bout. The belt pack goes back to Jones waist. Whenever he liked, hopefully, on the TV screen. 